Hey guys, welcome to another Nerd Impacts Incoming Weekly. Got some news for, for you this week. Nick, what do we got here? Why don't you start us off? I think we should start off with Jake's favorite thing. <laughs> oh, I really actually thought we were going to make it all the way through without you guys remembering. <laughs> to bring up Rock and Sock and Robots. <laughs> all right, here we go. Here goes nothing, kids. They're making a Rock and Sock and Mo- Robots movie, and... I have to talk about it. And Vin Diesel's going to be in it. And I'm really sad <laughs> to know that this is a thing going on. But um, no, Mattel, um, Mattel's got this thing started. Uh, Vin Diesel is real excited about it, apparently. And um, I, I don't really know how much more you want me to say about it. I mean, we had a Battleship movie. That was a thing <laughs> that actually happened. And so, Rampage. And a Rampage. Actually, funny enough that you say Rampage because the guy who um, penned Rampage and also um, movie The Commuter, which mm-hmm. I did not see, he's the uh, scribe as well for this. His name, this this terrific man who gave me The Rock in Rampage, but is now the awful, awful human that's going to give me Vin Diesel and Rock'em Sock'em Robots is none other than Ryan Engel, who penned the screenplay for this. And... Um, this is a movie that's about two robots. Like we saw Real Steel, as you mentioned to me earlier. Like I, I was, I was good after that. Well, I, I said, I, why, I thought it was fun. why don't they save some time and just retitle Real Steel, Real Steel, a Rock'em Sock'em story? <laughs> My other question is: Is Vin Diesel going to be a human in this, or is he going um, to be one of the robots? I can tell you a little <laughs> bit about that. Um, from what's going on, from what I, from what I can gather, um, Mattel Films, Universal, and Vin Diesel. You're are teaming a up bit out of frame. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, it, you know, you gotta fall out of frame every once in a while. I've had neck problems. I got a lot of stuff going on. Anyway, um, yeah, it was. Uh, Jake, I'm trying to remember what was out here. So they put this. Uh, Ryan Angle put this screenplay together, which is going to follow follow a father and son um, who form this unlikely bond with an advanced AI war machine. And, um, <laughs> yeah, that's it. You good? All right, moving on. That's it. That's it. Uh, what I, I can only assume that, um, yeah, uh, to take the classic Rock and Sockham game um, with Mattel as my partner, said Vin Diesel, unbelievably, and align it with the kind of world building franchise making success we have had with Universal is truly exciting. Diesel is on board. Please let's move on to the next topic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to get into a little bit of sequels. Uh, Chris, who is coming to The Flash? Oh, yes. So it, it we we had some news on this back when we did DC Fandom, but there, there was some uh, back and forth later. I guess they were having issues with scheduling with uh, the national treasure that is Michael Keaton. Um, they were ha- having some issues with scheduling, but it seems like they worked it out, and we are indeed going to get Michael Keaton in the Flashpoint movie. I'm super excited! So I, I, I'm literally escaped from words right now. We don't this know. We thing. don't know how much um, he'll be in it. Um, we don't know if he'll be in the bat suit. We don't know if it's going to be Bruce Wayne. We don't know if he's going to be in it for. Two hours. We don't know if he's going to be in it for ten minutes, but we're getting Michael Keaton back as Batman, as Bruce Wayne. So I can't remember. Did he make a cameo in the Crisis? No. Huh. And we did get a cameo on his Earth. Yeah, like it took yeah, place yeah, in there. Yeah. Like you got to see a, a vision of, but he wasn't in it. Right. Yeah. But what's interesting about that, assuming that that is also the same Earth, which it was called Earth eighty nine, so I'm imagining it will be. Although the Crisis event did rewrite everything, so it could be a little different. But well, no, the Ezra Miller came in, so yeah, but it's the, possible. But also the the bat signal that you see in the sky when they're on Earth eighty nine, and it was Knox. Yeah, the the actor reprised mm-hmm. his role as Knox. Yeah, sitting there, 
um, with the newspaper. But the what we saw in the sky, the bat signal was actually like very close to the Batman Beyond bat signal. So that was interesting. So it's possible. I, do you think it's old possible? Old man Bruce Wayne. Old man Bruce Wayne and Terry McGinnis. Maybe. Or <laughs> they bring back, uh, what well, was his na- uh, name that play- played uh, Robin? I, Batman and Robin, Batman Forever, bring him back and make him Batman Beyond. <laughs> I could tell you a little bit about what we know, like officially, um, from seeing um, is, uh, that Rat Magazine, um, who reports on a lot, um, does a lot of good inside reporting. Um, they said that um, he will be seen as his role as the Batman. The uh, story revolves around the protagonist's faith fateful journey into the past causing massive consequences for the present therefore we will not only get to see michael keaton but we'll also get to see ben ben affleck as batman for the last time um these and it's um they're in they're in um they're in production heavy production right now um michael keaton was seen on the set like on monday of this week so um he's there even though like a couple weeks ago he apparently was like, "Oh yeah, I also I don't know how involved I'm gonna be on this Flash thing because of like the pandemic. Like, it was like a major like crash. Like on like everybody was tweeting like, oh my god, Michael Keaton's backing out.' But he was on set um, Monday. Um, we're looking at a 2022 November release nice. for the Flash, so it should be super exciting. So speaking of, uh... but it's gonna be multi-universal, which is really cool. So I mean. It, it we really could the, the potential to what we can see like the world building for it would be really really amazing. Now, Nick, you brought up sequels. And speaking of sequels, you know, we just had our Mortal Kombat review, and it sounds like we could potentially get up to four more. And uh, there, there's no limit to the stories you can tell in Mortal Kombat. We have such a rich mythology there. They they hinted at a lot of it in this movie. Nick, Joe Taslim, um, that played. Sub Zero told us that he signed on for up to a total of five movies. This one and <coughs> four included, sequels. Yeah, based on the success of this one. Yeah, yeah. And amongst fans, it appears this is being very successful. It's got an eighty-nine percent audience score. Um, what would you like to see, Nick, in some future Mortal Kombat movies? Obviously, more Scorpion. I want him to like be back for real, like being able to cross over at his own will. Hmm. That would be really awesome. Just so you know, none of us have gas. That's a drill, a drill next door. <laughs> well, we might. We might have well, gas. Well, some of, some of us might yeah, might have gas. But that's a drill next door. Um, Good part of the humor that goes on in my brain are dick and fart jokes. So there's, it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> the kuna matata. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, I, I want to see Noob and Smoke. In, in the... I think it's very likely the next one's going to heavily focus on. Well, he signed on for four movies, four more movies, and you know that he's not going to be. He's not going to be uh, Sub Zero, right? <laughs> he's going to be Noob. Um, but I, I hope we do get the younger Sub Zero. That'd be really cool, and definitely more Liu Kang. Maybe we'll even get the un- remember the undead Liu Kang. Mm. Um. So yeah, can't can't wait to see more from Mortal Kombat. When I heard you guys talking about it earlier, I mean, I, it sounded like they gave a couple. There was a couple Easter eggs from other characters, so it's, yeah. it sounded like there we might see um, Night Wolf. Yeah, there was there was right. a there was an um, image we saw of Night Wolf, an image of Kodal Khan. Kodal the Kong. the end right at the end of the movie was the tease for Johnny for uh, Johnny Cage. Right. Yeah, Johnny Cage will probably be a huge part of the next one. You got to throw some robots in the next one, man. You got to see some Cyrax, man. Need some. Need some. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you said smoke, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they had Kano in it, and they were talking about the the um was the the black dragon plan. Yeah. I just want some cyborg gen- ninjas, bro. No, I'm good. I'm good to go on that. Yeah. yeah what else do we got here, Nick? More in sequels, we have <clears throat> Alfred Molina, Spider Man Three. He uh, teased a little bit of it and said, basically, he's gonna his character is gonna be starting off where. He left off in Spider-Man 2. Which was at the bottom of a river. Right, but he didn't die. According to the way that this plot moving forward is looking. They're taking Mm -hmm. it from the moment that he that he went into the river. And it left it ambiguous. If you look at if you watch the very 
end scene with Doctor Octopus mm-hmm. and Spider Man too. And I and I know that you're you're a little uneasy about the way that this is going forward. Right? I'm okay with it. It's just I don't want to know too much. Right. Well, yeah, like to, just to know though that like they did like they had already made it clear that like his, that he didn't necessarily like it to the outside viewer would seem that you know. That he that he died at the end of that, but I, I thought it was great when he was talking to you know when he was when he was talking to Marvel about it and in, in the interview that um, that we were looking at based off of this, uh, Alfred Molina was like, "I died at the end of it," and he's they're like, nah, "In this universe, nobody really, <laughs> nobody really dies." <laughs> well, the interesting thing about it is because he, he, I'm not gonna say die, but he he went off with a heroic act, right? So is he going is he going to be a villain or is he going to is he actually going to be uh helping them figure out this whole multiverse thing it's I think true. we we could see him more as the more as Dr. Octavius than Doc Ock uh, well I mean from from what I was seeing and from what I was reading it, it sounded like he's going to be villainous like he like he was concerned a lot about uh Alfred Miller was con- um, concerned about how he was going to be shot because I mean it was like tw- 20 years ago mm-hmm. just uh well, well two years less but um, he he. That was his major concern. Even after he was like he mm-hmm. said about you know how Doctor Ock died at the end of it. Like that was like his easy way going into it. And like they were they they said you know nobody really dies in this. And he was like, I'm old. <laughs> okay, <laughs> how are you gonna make me? How am I gonna do this? Like mm-hmm. how am I gonna be Doctor Octopus? And he's like I'm not that. He's like I'm kind of saggy. Like he was really funny about it to the guy, and like they worked it out great. And he's like it was like it was really cool. He's like all the extremities work. It's like mm-hmm. it's a real suit. All the all of my tentacles work, and he's like, "I'm just directing them." It's like I'll shoot a look, a menacing <laughs> look at the camera, and you're watching this from the Twitter feed. It was really cool, like the little the interview that he did, like him talking. It was it was really awesome. So like he he, I think if anything, I believe from what I'm seeing, from what I'm hearing, is like he's going to be even more of a menacing villain than he was before. But I think it's be, it. I think it's more detached. I think when he went in there, maybe Doctor Octavius finally like the the AI from the tentacles like act. That's what I think is maybe completely took over. Well, the AI from the the control chip was fried at the end. Well, of the that's movie. what I'm saying. I think maybe it became more hyperbolic. Like he's like he he completely changed. He like he's completely changed over from what from the way it sounded. Like this. Like he's he's on he's on a menacing mission. Wait. <clears throat> The chip for the AI for him to control the tentacles was destroyed early in the movie. Yeah, and they became and self-aware. Then, yeah, but he struggled to finally get oh, control yeah, of them right, at the end right. of this yep. movie. I think he might still be ha- struggling to keep control over them when they bring him back in. Right, that's why I think it's some deeper bonding that they mm. that they made with him. So it's like where it's like um like almost like telepathic. Maybe in a way, you know what I mean, where they like where it's able now to control his emotions, where he's mm-hmm. having a hard time detaching from that. But it's it sounded like it's going to be a pretty cool plot. We're get we're gonna have all we're gonna have every Spider Man we've seen live action going up against having to finalize their battles. So we'll get it sounded like we're going to get closure on the other Spider Mans that we didn't get to see closure on, and a grand battle with a new set of villains. Well, you now this also brings in the possibility for another thing. Jamie Foxx's Electro. Is he coming back in the same weird way that he was in the other Spider-Man movie? Yes, for the most part. This looks a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, he did say he won't be blue. Okay, maybe they... Ish, though. <laughs> Not yet. No, he said he won't be blue. So, I think we're getting out. more classic costumes. It's pretty cool. It, 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 it's not, but it's, it's cool. They, they, they showed some of the rent, some like the rendering from it. There's oh, some like, of the art. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Now, do you think they're going to ignore the blue or give the like a lot? I'm not going to say anymore. Like a story to how he went from that appearance to the new appearance. Oh, I get what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I guess we'll just have to wait and find out. We don't even know for sure that. I mean, technically. The amazing Spider-Man two, or or even the Spider-Man two crossovers that we get, I mean, if they want to, it doesn't even need to be that exact universe. This is the multiverse. Yeah. Right, but the fact that Alfred Molina's character is coming straight from Spider-Man two, 
doesn't that when can't we sit be can it be safe to assume that the other Spider-Man will come in from that same universe that we saw before? It's Marvel, man. And Nick, you said it er- yourself earlier. Mar- in Marvel, anything can happen. And you don't want to know too much. <laughs> <laughs> but sticking to Marvel, Nick, what do you think about the, this uh, secret invasion news? Amelia Clark. I'm sorry. Dude, you o- ruined my opening for that. <laughs> <laughs> we, I'm taking it. Here, we're going to, re- here, rewind it back. Rewind. All right, go ahead. We have two castings. We have Khaleesi in Secret Invasion, mm-hmm. and then we have Jarrell in Love and Thunder. Which one's Which one your favorite? <laughs> You need to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting to it. Let the man get to it. Proceed. <laughs> Which ones are you guys most looking forward to? Which casting? Even though we don't know uh, what Amelia Clark says, we know Russell Crowe is going to be Zeus. I'm, I would say I think we both are the same on this. Yeah. I, I'm lo- I'm really looking forward to seeing Russell Crowe. Well, and I think for the same reason, we're thinking that having Russell Crowe as Zeus means that we are inevitably it's a getting Hercules, for Hercules in Love and Thunder. Okay. And that will that will be awesome. And Hercules that that oh, that could go in so many places, man. I yeah. would love to see the where, where Dude, that goes. What if they do like the Maestro story? Because oh, he starts off as the Maestro yeah. and then Hulk takes it from him. Yeah. And then that's like there is there. There's already been talks about a Hulk movie, like going it going into the mm-hmm. works or a ser- well, or they, end or series. They still have some red tape with Universal, which is why they did yeah. the, way, the way they did Ragnarok. But they could do something similar here, where they could call it a Maestro movie, yeah, and they could say, "Oh no, this is Hercules movie." Yep, and then and have the Hulk, Hulk. in it. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't have to be a Hulk movie for Hulk to be in it. Which is kind of his kind of his range anyway, and so it, it, that's the way they've kind of built the, the Hulk to be in mm-hmm. Marvel movies. In this current, you know, in the Disney Marvel universe, he he's like the he's like a flux player. He can just kind of show up as Bruce Banner and something. He could yeah. show up as the Hulk and something, and like be in it for a whole lot, just a cameo. But like he could show up anywhere. Mm-hmm. Like he could show up in Spider Man for all we know. Well, guys, uh, my, I would really, the, the casting I'm most looking forward to is Amelia Clark's because I favor the unknown and the fact that we don't know who she's going to be yet. Like, she could be something just really minor. I could be getting my hopes up over nothing, or she could be a character that I'm really going to love. Because it's like a new, like, because, like, Secret Invasion is a new subject matter for you. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I, it's in in a way too. Like I didn't, I didn't get like super involved when Secret Invasion as the storyline had originally come out. So it's a lot of it's like new to me too. So I'm really curious about. It. And I never seen Game of Thrones either, but I know she's really hot. So that's <laughs> that works for me. <laughs> so I, I'm I'm intrigued as I'm intrigued as well. But man, I do really want to see Zeus. Like no one know where that could go. But mm. that like it it I'm I'm very curious too. Like what her where she's gonna go with it. Do you know at all? Uh, no, no. I mean, <laughs> the only thing we know about this is that there's going to be scrolls involved. We know um, Monica Rambo from WandaVision is involved because the scrolls came and got her at the end of WandaVision. Mm-hmm. And we know that it's going to be very Nick Fury centric. We're going to have a lot of Samuel Jackson. Um, I, I'm willing to bet there's going to be some reveals as to other characters in the MCU that have been scrolls all along. And um, my best guess on who Amelia Clark would play would probably be Talos' daughter. Because last we saw, she was a little kid. What if it's something that maybe possibly doesn't make sense to any of it and they're trying to link in? You know, a lot of the, lot of the Marvel shows and stuff are like try to link up with another show mm-hmm. where there's tie ins. And now we got like X Men stuff possibly coming up. What if she was Emma Frost? I think she could be good casting for Emma Frost, but I do not think any of these series that have already been announced are going to tie to X-Men. No? No. 
That was the only thing I could think of. That's where I. That's where I was coming up. I could see. I could see her playing something from that, from that angle. Yeah, I don't know, man. I think it'd be really cool to, you know, see her as a scroll, because I don't think we ever got to see Amelia Clark done up as an alien. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Are you guys imagining now or trying to imagine? Yes, I am. <laughs> Too late. It's already happened. You said so you said her name and then alien and then it With was this, already this, happening. The scroll chin. Amelia With Clark the... in Star Trek. She's that pretty that I was I like I like I have like I said, never seen the show, was already able to do that. Like it like within Yeah, you're, you're just thinking about how attractive Amelia Clark is. Nick's thinking about what would she look like green in twenty alien. years <laughs> and a weird chin. Or blue like Electro. Possibly Electro. That's fine too. <laughs> uh, that's great. What's next, Nick? What else we got? What else we got, man? Oh, no. The list went away. <laughs> Nick, you were the keeper of the list. An old series. Oh, yeah. Huh? A whip. Treasures that turn into booby traps. <laughs> we, we got some Indiana Jones news, huh? Yeah. A little um, bit. Doctor Doom is going to be the villain. <laughs> Mads, Mads Mikkelsen, my number one pick for Doctor Doom, is going to be of the villain in Indiana Jones Five, with a ninety-seven-year-old Indiana Jones by the time it comes out. Oh, shit, I don't. <laughs> I'm, I'm just waiting for Indiana Jones to finally just come out about being. I've been high this whole time. Just been smoking mad weed. I'm a I'm an archaeologist, and I like digging around in the dirt and playing in temples. I'm very high while doing all of this. <laughs> you know that he's old. Um, Harrison Ford is going to be old older in this one than that Sean is, Connery was playing yeah, his dad. It's great, oh, man. You know Sean's loving that up there. <laughs> so do do they Down do, there, do they bring back hit, do they bring back uh, in Indy's son? Shia LaBeouf. Uh, let's uh, let's hope so. <laughs> I hope so. I really do. I, I love Shia LaBeouf as an actor. All, I did all, too. The, all the stuff that's going on with him aside, you think he's a brilliant actor, but they're probably probably going to steer clear of that for this. Yeah, one. he's ty- he's social tox- toxic stuff, especially with yeah. l- with the people involved in that crew. I don't think that's something that's going to happen. Yeah, but you know, that's all right. That's all right too. Uh, you know, what if we had a young Indiana Jones series that was Shia LaBeouf? That was playing a father aged. Like, he was playing Sean Connery's role when, like, as the archaeologist, and we actually have a different Indiana Jones in it mm. playing young Indiana Jones. That would be cool. That that you would had, be unexpected. You'd have the son of Indiana Jones playing Indiana Jones' dad in a prequel. Or Indiana Jones playing Indiana Jones' dad and the son of Indiana Jones playing Indiana Jones. Right. <laughs> or and the Mads other way. Mick- and Mads Mikkelsen playing Doctor Doom. In that movie. <laughs> what a farce. <laughs> but yeah, all joking aside, Mads Mikkelsen is always awesome as a villain. Um, Just the guy's got a... He's got a menacing look yeah. about him, man. And his... It, yeah. His tone, he has, a, he has quite a presence. And... If you're scenery, you're chaining yourself to the ground because he will eat you. <laughs> Man chews up some scenery. I gotta love that. That it? That all we got? Looks nope. like that's all we got? Nope. That's, that's all it. we're saying about Indiana Jones? Like nothing? Wait, hold on. Nick's got... We got some Asian heritage superhero action. Yeah, dude. Oh, we got another Marvel movie. We got another Marvel movie. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten, Ten Rings. Rings. I'm most thing I'm looking forward to. I don't mean to cut anybody off in this, but I'm looking forward to the most. I'm hoping not only that we get the Mandarin, but that we get a Mandarin that's done proper. I think mm. that was confirmed, wasn't it? That we're gonna get a uh, uh, the true Mandarin. Yeah, we are getting the true Mandarin. It's very very cool. Like, um, that's what I'm saying. Like I mean, like when I hope when we get it, that that's what it like it actually. Jake, there's is. some potential for some kaiju action too. That's true. They they mention in the trailer the yep. sleeping dragon. I know. I don't let's not let's not wake it. Let's not wake it. <laughs> let's let it let's let it come awake when it's <laughs> that's gonna be so cool. Go ahead. Well, because we had talked about it before, like way back when. Yeah. 
So there, there's potential here for fin, Fing Fang Foom. Oh my god, that would be so cool. I don't know who that is. He's a giant He's dragon a giant, from space. A giant, like, you know, like Chinese? <laughs> like, like, like Ghidorah? The, uh, yeah, but Just like... with one head? Oh, dude, it's amazing. You, did, it, when we wrap up here, this guy right here is going to be indoctrinated <laughs> to, a whole, to a whole new realm. You're going to find your your new favorite Marvel character, I bet. This Probably. Think Fang Fim is the shit, bro. Mm-hmm. When, isn't he tied to the Ten Rings? Yeah, absolutely. Like that's the they're, they're alien technology. Yeah, it's the high. It's the highest purpose of the of the Ten Rings. Like that's the highest channeling of the of the harnessing of the power. Controlling Fin Fang Fim. Yeah, bro. Ah. Uh. And 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 from like the way that the where the movie would be starting off, I it would put the Mandarin currently as mm-hmm. his bearer. Yeah. And this is um, Simu Lu. I, I really hope I'm gonna say this right. Simu Lu from um, uh, uh, Kim's Convenience, playing Shang Chi. Yeah. yeah, I n- didn't watch Kim's Convenience, so I don't really know who he is yet. But if this uh, if this movie does well and he does well as uh, Shang Chi. I'd love to see more of his work. Yeah, and his costume but, looks pretty cool. Yeah, it does. It I can't think. be as bad as the Iron Fist. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, this is you know this is Foggy at the helm. I know that's what I'm saying. That like that like yeah. there's there's no way that this can be as bad as that. Mm-hmm. So that's that's great. There's only there's only progress, and that's like the closest thing I can think of, really, you know, in the realm of what they've already of what they have going on. But if you haven't seen the trailer, go check it out. It's mm-hmm. really awesome, action packed. Uh, it gives you a pretty good idea of what's going on in this movie, I'd say. But it doesn't give too much away. But do- yeah, yeah, it doesn't give too much away. It's Nick's favorite kind of trailer. That's right. <laughs> he doesn't want to know the story before he sees the story. I get that. That makes sense. You know what yeah. I mean? Don't tell me stuff that I'm that I'm going to want to see and be surprised about. Makes sense. Except the dragon, dude. We're going to get you. Get, you have to be prepared for Think Fang. That's going that's to happen. It's probably going to it's be one of be my prepared. favorite movies if it has the dragon. <laughs> the dragon is crazy, bro. <laughs> it, there's not a comp. There's not a. There's not an image of Fing Fang Foom you could pull up that isn't just like what am I looking at right now. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think that's it. So, are you gonna Are you gonna make me bookend with Rock'em Sock'em Robots? I know I said I would, but please don't make me do that. We already did Rock'em Sock'em. I know, but I don't want to bookend with it. I said I would. I know we're good. With it, we, I, we've had enough of a. I already. I'm already sad. Vin Diesel as a robot <laughs> with with getting his. I already his had my block up. knocked yeah. off. <laughs> now we're gonna spare Jake that one. So don't forget, like, comment, and subscribe on Facebook and on YouTube. And until next time, stay nerdy.